Good morning, this is Chris Shoemaker, also known as Yehuda Ben Shomer, and you are listening to Coffee with Chris, the time of the day where we share a cup of coffee and share a bit of the Word of God. Okay, this is our very last Sidra, our last Ali Ah for this week. This is Friday and Saturday's portion combined, and it covers Numbers chapter 10, verse 11, all the way to chapter 12, verse 16. But we're just going to deal with a few verses in chapter 11. So let's go to 11, 16, and 17, and it says, Adonai said to Moses, Bring me 70 of the elders whom you know to be elders of the people and their leaders. Take them to the tent of meeting. Now, the tent of meeting was always the place when somebody was anointed, when somebody was consecrated, uh, when somebody was dedicated to God for some sort of service, whether it would be the Levites, the Nazarites, whether it be somebody cleansed of leprosy, wh whatever. And so it says, so they may stand with you there. Then I will come down and speak with you there, and I will take some of the Ruach, some of the spirit that is on you, and will place it on them. They will carry with you the burden of the people, so you will not carry it alone. So we know that Moses was, was, was responsible for and leading you know, uh, thousands upon myriad of thousands of people, millions of people. And that is a task that is just way too much for one pair of shoulders to bear. And we know that God carried the burden and helped Moses, but Moses needed other men uh, because there was just too much going on, too many court cases to hear, too many problems to solve. And so the Lord said, take 70 elders. Now, why 70? Because 70 represents the 70 root nations of the world. Uh, and so uh, that was enough, the 70 leaders, and they probably had leaders under them as well, that helped with all the issues and problems of millions of people in the camp of Israel during their wandering through the 40 years in the wilderness. 70, because there's 70 leaders and 70 elders in this passage, in the New Testament times, in Yeshua's day, there were 70 uh, elders that sat on the Jewish Supreme Court, which is called the Sanhedrin. So I think that's very interesting there, and I thought that would be something that you would like to know. Now, verse 17, it says, Then I will come and speak with you there, and I will take some of the Ruach, the spirit that is on you, and place it on them. Now, we know that John the Baptist came in the spirit of Elijah. So let's look at it this way. This may be a little hard to understand when you just say, okay, somebody's spirit is taken from them and put on somebody else. Sounds a little ooby-gooby and a little mystical, but it's not that mystical at all. Let's take a candle, for instance, because the scripture says that the soul of a human being is a candle unto the Lord. So let's say that Moses is a candle and the candle's lit. And if you take a candle and light an unlit candle, Will that diminish the flame on the original candle? No, that flame is just as lively and as strong as ever before, but that flame was able to ignite another candle. So this is what it means by the, the spirit that is on Moses will be placed upon the people as well. And we know that that spirit that guided Moses is the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, there's enough to go around. The Holy Spirit is not going to be diminished if he if he's on me and on you and on somebody else. So this is this is kind of what it's like. Then I will come down and speak with you there, and I will take some of the spirit that is on you, and I will place it on them. They will carry with you the burden of the people, so you will not carry it alone. All right. So this also shows that uh, when we're in ministry and service to the Lord, that we need other people, spirit-filled people, to come alongside us and come along and help us as well. Now, I want to jump down and read a couple more verses in this same chapter, verses 26 through 29. Um, you know, when these 70 elders were there at the camp, for some reason, there was a couple guys who couldn't come. Uh, they were delayed in coming, what have you. It says, two men, however, had remained in the camp. The name of the one was Eldad, and the name of the other was Medad. The Ruach, or the Spirit, rested on them. They didn't have to be at the tabernacle to get the Holy Spirit, or the Spirit that was upon Moses, that Moses you know, kind of transferred to others. They were in the camp and it says they were among those listed, but had not gone out to the tent. So they prophesied in the camp. That was the sign that the spirit fell upon them. And a young man ran and told Moses and said, Oh, dad and me, dad are prophesying in the camp. Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, since his youth cried out and said, Moses, my Lord, stop them. But Moses said to them, 
are you jealous on my behalf? In other words, are you afraid that because people are hearing, you know, these these two guys prophesy, they're going to think that that they're now the leaders of Israel and people are going to look to them and they're going to pledge their allegiance to Eldad and Medad and we're going to be left out in the dust? No, don't worry about it. He says, are you jealous on my behalf? If only Adonai would make all his people prophets. If only Adonai would put the spirit on all of them. Then Moses and the elders of Israel returned to camp. This is to teach us that even as leaders, that we should be humble and not be intimidated if somebody is more successful than we are in ministry or if somebody displays some sort of gift or talent or some aspect of ministry that we do not cover. We shouldn't be afraid of kind of, you know, people losing their attention to us and going to somebody else. We should want people to outgrow us. We should want people to be better and more successful than we are. Every leader that trains up a disciple wants his disciple to succeed and become even greater than he is, to exceed himself. And uh, so, you know, I've had rabbis that I've set under, and I no longer set under them because they were bad, because they were teaching false doctrine. No, because simply I've learned all I can from them, and I've outgrown them, and that's not a bad thing. And I know that there's people that are going to outgrow me. Why? Because I know that there's people out there that are more in-depth in teaching and know a heck of a lot more than I do, and guess what? I'm totally cool with that. That's okay, because the Lord has a specific group and set of people he wants me to minister to, and once they've learned everything they can from me, they can move on and um you know, find another uh, teacher to sit under. This is just like missionaries. Missionaries want to work themselves out of a job. They don't want to stay in one place all their lives doing one mission all their life. They want to raise up elders and a community of believers in Africa or Asia or wherever and have these elders to be responsible enough and mature enough to lead the community. Why? So these missionaries can move on and go to another place that has been untouched and unreached. And so we need to learn and apply that to our life. We want people to outgrow us. I hope that makes sense to you. Guys, thanks so much for listening. Go out there and have a great day. Shalom and God bless.